Hey there, I'm Elsa, a 28-year-old graphic designer with a passion for creating beautiful visuals and an unbreakable spirit. Before I dive into my story, do me a quick favor and hit that like and subscribe button. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming. So let me paint you a picture of my life. I've been rocking this wheelchair since I was a kid, but it's never slowed me down. My cousin Megan and I, we were thick as thieves growing up. I'm talking shared secrets, matching outfits, the whole nine yards. Elsa, you won't believe it, Megan's voice squealed through the phone one day. Brad proposed. I nearly dropped my coffee. No way, tell me everything. As Megan gushed about the ring and Brad's romantic beach proposal, I could already picture the wedding. Sun, sand, and my best friend walking down the aisle. And guess what? Megan added. I want you to be my bridesmaid. I was over the moon. Are you kidding? I'd be honored. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of Pinterest boards, dress shopping, and late-night planning sessions. My parents were thrilled to see me so excited. It's wonderful to see you two so close, Mom said, smiling over her cup of tea. Dad chimed in. Just like when you were kids. But something started to feel... off. Megan's calls became less frequent, her texts shorter. When we did talk, she'd mention her new friends from work, Tiffany and Amber, more than the wedding plans. Sorry, Elsa, she'd say. Tiffany's got this great idea for the centerpieces. I'll fill you in later. I tried not to let it bother me. After all, planning a wedding is stressful, right? Then came the day I met Brad. Megan had invited us both over for dinner. Nice to finally meet you, Elsa, Brad said, his handshake warm and genuine. Megan's told me so much about you. As we chatted, I couldn't help but notice how Brad's eyes kept darting to Megan, a slight frown on his face. Something was definitely up. Just as I was about to ask if everything was okay, Megan's phone buzzed. Oh, it's Amber, she exclaimed, jumping up. Sorry, I need to take this. Wedding stuff, you know? As Megan disappeared into the other room, an awkward silence fell over Brad and me. So, I ventured, excited about the big day? Brad's smile seemed forced. Yeah, of course, it's just... Before he could finish, Megan burst back in, all smiles. Great news. Amber's found the perfect beach for the ceremony. I forced a smile, but my stomach twisted. Something about this whole situation felt wrong. Later that night, as I was getting ready for bed, my phone lit up with a text from Megan. Need to talk. Important news about the wedding. Call you tomorrow. Little did I know that call would change everything. The next morning, I woke up with a knot in my stomach. Megan's text had left me uneasy, but I tried to push the feeling aside. I grabbed my phone, took a deep breath, and dialed her number. Hey, Elsa. Megan's voice was oddly flat. Got a minute? Sure, what's up? Everything okay with the wedding plans? There was a long pause. About that, I've been thinking and... Well, I don't think it's going to work out with you being a bridesmaid. My heart dropped. What? Why? It's just... Megan's voice turned cold. The wheelchair. It won't match the beach aesthetic we're going for. It'll ruin the photos. I felt like I'd been slapped. Are you serious right now? Megan, I'm your cousin. We've been planning this for months. I know, I know. But Tiffany and Amber pointed out how it would look. We want everything to be perfect. Anger bubbled up inside me. So your new friends think I'll ruin your perfect day? Is that it? Don't be dramatic, Elsa. It's not personal. It's just how it is. Not personal. I spat. You're uninviting me from your wedding because I use a wheelchair. How is that not personal? The conversation devolved into a shouting match. By the time I hung up, I was shaking with rage and hurt. My parents found me sobbing in my room. When I told them what happened, Dad's face turned red with anger. I'm calling your aunt right now, he growled, stomping out of the room. Mom sat beside me, pulling me into a hug. Oh, sweetie, I'm so sorry. I can't believe Megan would do this. The next few days were a blur. Words spread through the family like wildfire. Phones rang off the hook, voices raised in heated arguments. I felt hollow, 
drifting through each day in a fog of depression. Maybe she's right, I mumbled to myself one night. Maybe I don't belong at a beach wedding. Just as I was spiraling into self-doubt, my phone buzzed. It was a text from an unknown number. Elsa, it's Brad. Can we talk? Curiosity overcame my hesitation. I called him back. Elsa, I'm so sorry about all this. Brad's voice was thick with emotion. I just found out what Megan did. It's not right. Thanks, Brad. I sighed. But it's done now. No, it's not, he insisted. I've told Megan either you come or I'm calling off the wedding. I was stunned. Brad, you don't have to do that. Yes, I do. This isn't the Megan I thought I was marrying. Those new friends of hers. They've changed her. As we talked, Brad filled me in on Megan's recent behavior. The lavish spending, the obsession with appearances, the constant influence of Tiffany and Amber. I think you should still come, Brad said finally. Show Megan and her so-called friends that they can't push you around. I mulled it over after we hung up. The idea of facing Megan and her crew terrified me, but a small spark of defiance had ignited in my chest. Opening my laptop, I booked a flight to the wedding destination. As I clicked confirm, a grim smile spread across my face. All right, Megan, I muttered. You want a perfect beach wedding? Let's see how perfect it is when I show up uninvited. Little did I know, my decision to attend would set in motion a chain of events that would change everything. As I entered the lobby, heads turned, whispers erupted among the people, and I caught snippets of conversation. Isn't that Megan's cousin? I thought she wasn't invited. Oh my God, what's she doing here? I steeled myself and approached the front desk. Just then I heard a shrill voice behind me. Elsa, what are you doing here? I turned to see Megan, flanked by two women I assumed were Tiffany and Amber. Megan's face was a mix of shock and anger. Hi, Megan. Surprise, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. You can't be here. You weren't invited. Actually, a deep voice cut in. I invited her. Brad appeared, placing a hand on my shoulder. The relief on his face was palpable. Megan's eyes narrowed. Brad, can I talk to you for a minute, privately? As they walked away, Tiffany and Amber circled me like sharks. You really should leave, Tiffany sneered. You're ruining Megan's perfect day. I was about to retort when I noticed Brad and Megan in a heated argument near the bar. Curiosity got the better of me, and I excused myself, moving closer to eavesdrop. I can't believe you invited her, Megan hissed. After everything we've done to make this wedding perfect. Brad's voice was strained. Megan, she's your family. How could you uninvite her over something so shallow? You don't understand. This wedding needs to be amazing. We need the pictures to go viral. Is that all you care about? Going viral? Brad sounded disgusted. What happened to the Megan I fell in love with? Their voices lowered, and I strained to hear. Suddenly, Brad left her. Her friend Amber came and Megan told her some words made me cold blood. Look, once we're married and I have access to Brad's trust fund, none of this will matter. We can have all the perfect weddings we want. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Megan was manipulating Brad for his money? My mind raced, trying to process this information. Just then, I felt a tap on my shoulder. I turned to see one of the groomsmen looking uncomfortable. Hey, uh, Elsa, right? I think you should see this. He handed me his phone. On the screen was a series of text messages between Megan and someone named Jake. My eyes widened as I scrolled through explicit messages and plans to meet up. I found this when I borrowed Megan's phone to call my girlfriend, the groomsman explained. I... I think Brad should know. I nodded, my mind whirling. Thank you. I'll handle it. As the groomsmen walked away, I sat there, overwhelmed by everything I'd learned. Megan wasn't just being shallow and cruel. She was cheating on Brad and planning to use him for his money. I looked across the lobby, seeing Brad's conflicted face as he talked with Megan. He deserved to know the truth. But how could I tell him without seeming like I was just being vindictive? Then it hit me. The wedding. 
If I was going to expose Megan's true nature, it had to be in a way that left no doubt. A plan began to form in my mind. I pulled out my phone and started making calls. If Megan wanted a wedding to remember, I'd make sure she got one, just not in the way she expected. As I finalized my plans, a grim determination settled over me. Tomorrow, at the wedding, everything would change, and I was ready. The morning of the wedding dawned bright and beautiful, but the air was thick with tension. I got ready, steeling myself for what was to come. As I made my way to the beach, I spotted Megan in her wedding dress, looking picture-perfect but with a hint of panic in her eyes. Megan, I called out. Can we talk? One last time? She glared at me. What is there to talk about? You shouldn't even be here. I know everything, Megan. About Jake, about Brad's money. This is your last chance to come clean. Her face paled, then hardened. I don't know what you're talking about. Security, remove her. As two burly men approached, I raised my voice. Fine, Megan, you've made your choice. I wheeled towards the gathering crowd, the security guards hesitating as guests turned to watch the commotion. Brad emerged from the crowd, confusion etched on his face. What's going on? He asked. I took a deep breath. Brad, there's something you need to know. Everyone needs to know. I pulled out my phone and connected it to the sound system. Megan's voice filled the air. Once we're married and I have access to your trust fund, none of this will matter. Gasps erupted from the crowd. Brad's face contorted in shock and betrayal. That's not all, I continued, my voice shaking. Megan's been cheating on you, Brad, with someone named Jake. I nodded to the groomsman, who stepped forward with his phone, showing Brad the messages he'd found. Chaos erupted. Megan screamed denials, but her lies were unraveling fast. Tiffany and Amber tried to defend her, but their voices were drowned out by the angry murmurs of the guests. Brad's face was a storm of emotions. He turned to Megan, his voice barely above a whisper. Is it true? Megan's silence was all the confirmation he needed. Without a word, Brad turned and walked away, leaving Megan standing alone in her white dress. The wedding dissolved into a flurry of confused guests and frantic phone calls. As I sat there, watching it all unfold, I felt no joy, only a profound sadness for what could have been. In the days that followed, the fallout was severe. Brad called off the wedding, and word of Megan's deception spread quickly. But that wasn't the end of it. The scandal prompted an investigation at Megan's workplace, revealing she'd been involved in fraud. She lost her job and faced legal consequences. My family rallied around me, appalled by Megan's actions. Ties were cut, and Megan found herself isolated, facing the consequences of her choices. As for me, life went on. I threw myself into my work, using the experience to fuel my creativity. My designs started gaining recognition, and I found myself busier than ever. One year later, I sat in my new studio, looking out over the city. My phone buzzed with a text from Brad. Hey, Elsa. Hope you're doing well. Thanks again for everything. Lunch soon? I smiled, thinking about how different things were now. Brad and I had become good friends, supporting each other through the aftermath of Megan's betrayal. As for Megan, last I heard, she was struggling to rebuild her life, her dreams of social media fame and easy money in ruins. Looking back, I realized that my wheelchair hadn't been the problem, it had been Megan's own insecurities and greed. In trying to create a perfect image, she'd lost sight of what really mattered. I turned back to my desk, ready to dive into my next project. Life wasn't perfect, but it was real. And that was so much better than any carefully curated illusion. The story has come to an end. Now I have a question for you. If you were in Brad's position... Would you have forgiven Megan if she had shown genuine remorse after being exposed? Or do you believe that some betrayals are too severe to forgive, regardless of apologies? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your perspective could help others who might be dealing with similar situations. If you enjoyed this story and want to hear more like it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Your support means the world to us and helps us continue sharing these thought-provoking stories. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.